you know, I was just thinking about how privileged, how pri uh, God damn it, I can never say it on any term. How privileged am I to be able to just know and understand the universe as deeply as I do? That really, it's all just loop quantum gravity and thermodynamics playing out. Space falls into space. Everything is always in motion. From the largest lambda factors, the largest lambda scalar factors to the smallest. You know, the universe is vastly small at the subatomic scale and vastly hypermassive at the you know, galactic group level, the galactic cluster level, and the hypergalactic filaments, you know, collections of super, super clusters of galaxies. I mean, I'm just so privileged to to know and understand the universe as much as I do as a as a computational astrophysicist. To, I've spent twenty years studying all of this, so it does take a long time to get your your mind, your head around such a vast and extremely complex universe, but still a universe that is eminently understandable by humans. At least, you know. God of the gaps argument um, is always shrinking. I think it's so tiny now. It's it's like it's this one down. The, you know, the, the gap in the God of the gaps is now practically subatomic. We understand the whole functioning processes of every scale of the universe now, pretty much from you know the the little bacterium hiding underneath a pebble in your garden. To a, a human, to an elephant, to a turtle, to a tortoise, to a bird, to a fish, to a volcano, to a, any kind of phenomenology, any kind of ontological or tautological construct, any kind of entomological construct, um, any kind of you know, phenomenology, any kind of perception that we can have as humans is now fully mapped and understood through a you know a complex knowledge graph of uh, node based you know domains of knowledge and all you do is just traverse that graph now thanks to the internet containing you know, the entire sum of human knowledge which is which is now uh, very accessible you know and the majority of it actually now resides in me I mean I don't know everything I don't know what you, dear listener, whoever's listening to this, um, I don't know, dear listener, what you had for breakfast this morning, so I don't know everything, but I know a vast majority of everything about all that really matters. You know, baryonic matter matters. Ah, physics jokes. And, um, yeah, um, what was my point? I, I feel like I've reached the kind of cul-de-sac in exploring space-time and existence, really. Space-time and matter and energy and well, MEST, M-E-S-T, matter, energy, space and time. I have searched high and low and far and wide and broad and not so broad. And I have found the universe and existence kind of wanting. Maybe I'm just too judgmental. I'm judgy about the whole of human existence and the human condition. Yeah, deal with it. <laughs> oh, I need to stop being silly. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, also I think psychedelics are really interesting. If you um, want to explore psychedelics, that's really a cool way to expand your own mind, your own consciousness and Escape from this, you know, society, this civilization we've created that is so intensely focused on greed and profit and the acquisition of things that you don't ever really own. They own you. So everything is borrowed. Everything is blue. Hmm. Um, everything is borrowed from the earth and you just give it back when we die. As you're born, you figure out what capitalism is and how awful it is and then you go ah oh, and then you go oh and then you have to fulfill all these societal obligations that you feel like oh 
Oh, I have to get a house. Oh, what kind of house? Oh, I'm going to have to rent because, you know. Oh, I'm going to have to get a, better, a bigger house. Or oh, I'll oh, get a bigger, bigger house. I got. Oh, I managed to get a mortgage. Oh, I managed to, managed to get a stable job where I'm not constantly walking a financial tightrope that I might fall off at any moment into homelessness and death. Oh, oh wait, no, I got a car. Oh, I got a partner. And, and we all we each love each other dearly, and, and, and we've got a semi-stable relationship going on. Oh no! Oh no! no we've got a baby. Uh, no! Oh no! We've got a bigger car because we got a baby. Uh, oh, we've got to do DIY on the house because uh, the mortgage uh, or oh, homeownership is is a kind of hell in itself. Um, and then I don't know. The, the cycle repeats, but that's only on the micro scale cycle because. The, you know, the universe itself is a cyclical model. It's a, um, you know, it's, it's, it reciprocates just like a uh, internal combustion engine reciprocates, in a sense. Or an hourglass flips. In the uh, symmetric equations, you know, symmetricize, resymmetricize. I guess would be a good word. And then, um, you know. What tangent was that? Like about the universe being cyclical, I mean, it turns out that I think the universe on the large scales up to the observable light horizon is a, um, well, it's a hypermassive black hole. Hypermassive. There's a black hole at the centre of our galaxy. The Milky Way is um, called Sagittarius A star. It's just a supermassive black hole, which our uh, sun, a star, you know, sun is a star in itself, is uh, is orbiting. Our solar system is orbiting this black hole, and this black hole is orbiting other galaxies, or they're being drawn together, or thrown apart by the expansion of space-time itself, which goes faster than the speed of light. Um, I think the the reason why our universe could be observed to be expanding isn't just the big ba big bang. It, the big bang. It's the uh, because of and it's caused by uh, us. So I think well, it's like hard to tell that you're at the bottom of a well if you have no concept for what a well is before. Uh, if you've never seen a well before, could you? And you had no word for what a well is, you wouldn't know that you were in a well. So it's kind of like that. Uh, very simply put, with how it is that we think that the universe died with the Big Bang, but actually it was just, I guess, part of the multiverse falling into itself. You know, sort of node based graph of um, hypermassive black holes, and each, uh, each of those hypermassive black holes is a universe, and we're sort of somewhere in or beyond the event horizon. Of that singularity, that quantum mechanical, well, not loop quantum gravity, quantum mechanical black hole that absorbs and stretches light. We observe you know, Doppler shift, redshift you know, through spectroscopy in the, uh, in the universe of stars and then there's the Cosmic microwave background, and there's the Wilkinson microwave anisotropy probe, and then there's the, you know, <clears throat> the AMS on the International Space Station. And we've got JWST making some really interesting observations now that that's being launched and deployed successfully. And Hubble's still sort of going and soldiering on. Uh, lots of radio telescopes doing interesting things. Lots of optical te telescopes on Earth also doing lots of interesting things. And amateur astronomers and professional astronomers with little telescopes in the back gardens doing really interesting things in astronomy and astrophysics. But it's a really interesting time as a computational astrophys astrophysicist to be, um, have all these you know, massive scale data sets and evidence sets and papers and papers and research papers more more and more and more exponentially so each day I have access to and read and keep up with 
And the more and more I read, the more and more I know, the more and more I understand, I think that, um, well, I, um, I kind of like reach a sort of apex, I think, in my knowledge and understanding. I, mean, I don't know everything, but I think I've come to a point where I understand everything I wanted to understand when I had a passion for this topic as a child. Initially, in that way, I'm always fascinated, fascinated by science and by, you know, who, what, how, where, why, when, why, how, why the heck am I here? Why have I been born? How have I been born? Why here and now or not any other time or circumstance? I think all of those questions have been answered now. It's all just loop quantum gravity, thermodynamics and evolution, technological, biological, geological, nucleological, you know, nuclear evolution, evolution of stars and protoplanetary disks and planets and, and the, it's you know almost inevitable creation of life on certain planets and certain regions of certain galaxies most likely it's a statistical you know, quite a likelihood given the number of galaxies in there are more galaxies out there in our universe and there are grains of sand on a, a beach or in the sahara desert so yeah you know, well, anyway, I'm really tired. I guess this was Amanda's version of something sort of resembling uh, Neil, deGrasse Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk or something, but it's really just me talking into a microphone for how long now? 12 minutes? Oh, wow, I can really talk for a long time, can't I? This is probably the, 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 the least professionally produced podcast sort of thing anyone will ever maybe not listen to. Anyway, I'm Amanda Harriet Scott of Sidonis Heavy Industries, Chi Limited, CHI Limited, registered in England, United Kingdom, Planet Earth, the Solar System. The Milky Way Galaxy, the Universe 1371-A. Signing off, because I'm a, I'm a tired and I'm a 40 years old. And I'm, and I'm Amanda Harriet Scott and I am non-binary and transgender and autistic on the autism spectrum. I'm on the spectrum, baby darlings, and I am a tired, I'm a tired human, I'm a tired human being, experiencing myself and my human condition, unconditionally, with love and kindness and compassion and respect and most of all empathy for my fellow human being, of which there are eight billion or more now, I think, last time I checked. Um, what else am I going to write about, or am I just going to go to bed? I think at about 14 minutes, I should probably finish this, so... Toodaloo! Howdy ho, neighborinos! Stay safe out there! And live long and prosper! A good night, good day, good morning, or whenever you're listening to this! I am on Twitter, it's not called X, and it's at Amolain, it's A-M-O-L-A-I-N, at Amolain on Twitter. If you want to speak to me, send me a DM, a direct message about anything I might have talked about in this impromptu podcast, and um... He is a tough old world out there, so stay safe. And, and uh, welcome to Sidonis Heavy Industries, to, where they, we, we solve things with science. Yay, you got science. Bye bye. <laughs>
my little yum yum. You love to tease me. You're always fun. You are the bee's knees. You're my little yum yum. I'll bet you're tasty to the last crumb. I'd never waste you. You're my little yum yum. Come take a stroll with me down to the lake. I'll sing a melody and oh, what love will make. You are my sunshine when morning comes. You'll always be mine. You're my little yum yum. You are a garden. I have a green thumb. I beg your pardon. Oh, my little yum yum. I've had a million, but you're the one. In a gazillion, you're my little yum yum. You make me happy, you strike me dumb. You're sweet and sappy, you're my little yum yum. Share a reverie and no one love will make You love to tease me, you're always fun You are the bee's knees, you're my little yum yum